Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello, hi. Welcome back to NPTEL MOOC's course on developing soft skills and personality. This is Ravichandran giving you this course from IIT Kanpur, Department of Humanities and Social Sciences. We are on week 8, module number 5 and lecture number 47. For this module, I have kept perhaps uh, the most important of all uh, skills that you need to develop that is with regard to reading skills. I deliberately kept it towards the end, so that either you pay lot of importance to the lectures I tell you at the beginning or you pay good attention towards the ones which are kept at the end. Although it is kept at the end, as you know, it is uh, kept in the last but not the least one and it is very important in terms of developing your soft skills and personality also. Now, in this uh, module in particular, we cannot go deep into various aspects of reading skills, but I will focus on those techniques that will give you various tips in terms of developing your reading effectively. Okay. And uh, once you develop it effectively, so then there are uh, uh, various aspects of reading, but to start with let us see how you can develop uh, your reading skills very effectively. And before I actually start, let us take a quick relook at whatever uh, I taught you in the previous lecture. In the previous lecture, it was with regard to presentation skills and that was the last lecture on presentation skills. I focused on the purpose of visuals, how you can use visuals separately or visuals in terms of using it in PowerPoint presentation. So, I suggested that the purpose of visuals is first to be understood clearly they are to illustrate key points, reinforce verbal message, stimulate audience interest and focus audience attention. And in that respect, I gave you some visual guidelines, especially when you use PowerPoint, do not use long sentences, use bullet points and the font size should be suitable appropriate to the length of the auditorium or uh, the lecture hall where you are going to present it. You need to check spelling on each slide, you need to check the visibility from a long distance and then uh, any kind of materials which will obscure for instance long formulas, so you should completely avoid. And when you give the presentation, you should avoid standing between the projector and the screen so that your shadow does not fall in between and then it hides and then people ask you to move away which will be very embarrassing for you. And certain presentation practicalities were also looked at such as emailing the presentation in advance, keeping a hard or spare copy in the form of uh, copies in pen drive or even DVD and printouts and then slides in the form of transparencies if required. And if possible, going to the venue and rehearsing with the computer is going to be very helpful and beneficial in overcoming your initial nervousness. Then I concluded with some final tips. I suggested that you should learn to use topics from your own experience instead of all the time preparing and then going and delivering talks on somebody's uh, suggestions. You should also develop narrative skills, you should develop your ability to tell stories, small anecdotes and then whenever you give a talk, understand that you should speak with a purpose. So, if you do not have any purpose, if you do not have something strong to convey to the audience, do not go just there for uh, fun. So, uh, that is not a good idea. Once you become an expert speaker, start using even your own anecdotes and then uh, develop a sense of humor by giving funny facts okay. and towards the end I emphasize that you should always communicate clearly, especially the most important points by which you begin your lecture or talk or speech. The first important 
point should be communicated very clearly and throughout the speech you should focus on effective communication which I talked to you much before. Instead of using jargons, complicated words, you should be simple, clear, concise in communication. Towards the end, I left you with a message that you should also learn to develop your own style of presentation. Whatever I have said, these are all major guidelines, but when you do it, apply your own mind, use creativity, develop your own presentation style and once you develop your own unique presentation style, you will have fans following you and then you will also get that standing ovation applause that I always tell you that you visualize before you start a speech. Now, to become a good presenter, you cannot just go there and say something, you need to read a lot. In fact, the quality of your presentation will directly depend on the quality of your reading and reading itself is an art. Okay. It is also a skill that you need to learn, develop, craft it. What are some of the interesting aspects of reading? Reading actually keeps the mind alive and progressive. So, if you want to live a very active progressive life throughout, there is no end point to reading. You need to read throughout your life and career. Okay. The ideal reader is somebody who reads that last word and then gives the last breath till the time he or she keeps reading something and carries uh, his or her favorite book to the deathbed. Okay. So, that kind of uh, uh, reading ability needs to be developed. When you read, you are actually dreaming with open eyes because you are sharing the dreams of so many people who try to inspire you and who try to transform you. Okay. In fact, there are books which have changed the lives of many people. Okay. It can mold the minds of millions and it can transform. So, most of the ideas that I am gathering and putting to you are all gathered from books. Of course, I am adding my own practical experience and practical tips, but then mostly it has come from my reading which I have started uh, from childhood. So, from that reading I have gathered lot of uh, materials and you also know that the more you read, the more you know and knowledge is power. And it is not only knowing, it is also kindling your thinking and imagination. Unlike watching a television, when you watch a television, people have already thought for you. That is why when you watch a television show just lying on your sofa, you are called as a couch potato. That is, you have nothing to do with regard to thinking or using your imagination. Whereas, when you read a novel, it kindles your imagination. When you read a critical work or even a uh, material that tries to provoke your thinking, your critical thinking is developing, your sense of discrimination, your ability to identify what is right or wrong. So, these things are developed when you read this. So, I would suggest that you should read at least 3 hours a day. This could mean including newspaper, magazine, some important documents as well as reading a novel or reading a personality development book or reading anything that interests you because soon you will become learned, you will become a scholar, you will become a renowned speaker, you will become a renowned writer, you will become a renowned communicator. Reading also helps you to gain new vocabulary, gain new ideas, gain new expression which you never thought was possible for you. You find new ways of communicating your ideas because you identify in reading, you uh, understand how words can be used in different contexts. But what is the sad part of uh, modern day life okay, that is uh, fast paced and then completely uh, influenced by media and then reading itself has come to e-book and then uh, mobile reading. So, what has happened is people have lost the passion for reading. If you remember before uh, TV, people were so much interested in reading and uh, people were waiting for the books to come. So, they were eagerly waiting for uh, serials. 
But now the passion is lost because you have various ways of reading, but at the same time there are equally competing ones, sometimes more tempting and interesting ones which occupy our time and then mental space and it is not letting us to do reading properly. Many are afraid of reading. So, this is what I want to tell you that some of you or even most of you are actually afraid of reading because you think that it consumes so much of your time and you say that where is time, I do not have time. Now, it is for those of you in particular and in general about developing this art of reading, I am going to give you some very time tested techniques for developing your reading in a better and faster manner. What are those techniques? Now, the first one is previewing and sampling. Now, why should we use this? If you understand the way you have started reading, you would have realized that when you read comic books, it was rather very easy to read or some detective fiction like Sherlock Holmes even if the words are bit difficult, but you are able to read it much faster. But when it comes to some scientific document, research article or a legal document or a huge novel like war and peace, so your reading speed has reduced, it has considerably slowed down and it scares you. You wonder how, how can I read this, it looks like I will take a lifetime to read this kind of novel and this kind of material. If it scares you, it only means that you are a slow reader and you have not learned some basic techniques of reading faster and better. Okay. Reading wisely also implies reading smartly. So, you need to learn some smart techniques. Instead of struggling, laboring to read something uh, fully, you only need to know what is to be read fully and there are certain things which you can completely eliminate and uh, leave it. The first technique that is previewing or sampling which uh, almost uh, tells one and the same thing. What it does is in case when you are uh, faced with this kind of overwhelming situation where you have to read through some 50 books or 50 project reports and you have to select one out of that okay. and then only one is going to be useful to you and you have to identify that. Now, how do you do that when you have so much to uh, access to and then select one that will be relevant, so then you can do this previewing or sampling. So, uh, you do this when something is very long and very difficult to read and normally it is done to give you or get a quick feel of what the book is about, what the report is about. If it is a book, what you can do is if it is printed, you can just first take a quick preview of what is there on the uh, back flap. So, the back flap is on the back side of the cover where uh, some reviews or some brief idea about the plot of the book is mentioned. Short reviews of the book are also there either in the back flap or in the inside cover. So, short uh, critical reviews are also mentioned. So, those things will give you some idea first as whether you can go through further or not. You can also go through the contents, the chapter headings and then the introduction. For a quick preview, what you need to do is you should read the first and the last and any chapter in between that is the first chapter and the last chapter and one of the chapters a chapter in the middle in between for a quick preview. But then you also want a detailed preview then within that first last and any chapter in between you can also go for one detailed method that is read the first two paragraphs. Okay, read the first two paragraphs of all the chapters now and then read only the first and the last sentences of each successive paragraphs. Okay, so, each paragraph the first two you are reading in each chapter the first two paragraphs are read and after that the first line and the last line of the following paragraphs 
and then when the chapter is about to end read the last two paragraphs then go to the next chapter read the first two paragraphs and read only the first and the last sentence of each successive paragraphs and read the entire last two paragraphs then go to the next chapter now in this way you get a detailed preview what is the advantage of this as i said if uh, your uh, phd supervisor has asked you to read 100 dissertations and select one that you can model on so you need not read all 100 word by word but you can do this preview so this helps you to eliminate what you do not want to read and choose the one you like to read okay what you don't want to read you can quickly eliminate by previewing and you can select the one that is important and then you can do for example the other techniques which i am going to tell you and then you can read in detail as what you want from the book what is the next technique the next one is skimming now once you have decided that you will read a book now you can go for skimming but skimming is generally used for reading or glancing through quickly it helps in rapid reading of short simple light reading materials like for example newspapers magazines travel brochures so you just skim so what is today's important news so or if you are interested in sports you just directly go to sports page and see whether somebody won the uh, uh, olympic medal or not so you just want to see that news or who won against to whom in this match okay so you just go to that one and then you just quickly uh, start reading that one so skimming helps you to get a rough idea of what the book is about and it involves three stages that is this pre reading stage proper skimming that is you try to uh, do a kind of preview and anticipate what you are expecting in this and then you read quickly take quick look and also you quickly review in your mind what is it about you reflect on it now how to do this in a very effective manner imagine that your eyes are like magnets and then move the eyes very quickly very fast okay and when it is moving quickly here and there so it should pick the keywords main points now where do you find this keywords main points usually in a sentence there is one core word so if you remove that word it's not giving proper meaning in terms of content in terms of idea it is there and sometimes these core words keywords are on the first sentence one in the middle sentence and one in the last sentence of a paragraph often they are also called as topical sentences if you can catch them and if you can get the key words from these ones you will skim very quickly because you will understand it and then you will know the gist that is the overall idea of what you are going to read very quickly so sometimes you may be struggling and then you may be feeling frustrated to read something because you don't do skimming you may be reading in a very old method so word by word so which is actually a rotten way of improving your uh, speed in terms of reading so use skimming especially if it is light and if you want to uh, read something very rapidly now the next technique is scanning now what is scanning scanning is reading a text quickly in order to find specific information especially uh, for example you want to get some figures or names or numbers or year okay from a long passage from a long text how do you do that now use wh questions who is he who is the person that i am looking for where is he place london okay new york where is he look for the place what is he doing okay and what time is he leaving what time is the train leaving okay. the timing what is the number of the bus that i am supposed to catch what is the gate in which this flight is going to take off so look for specific bits of information when you actually scan as when you do it while checking a number in a telephone directory or check for train timings 
or look for historical events which year this happened or even when you uh, look for somebody's uh, birth date or some details when you go to some uh, uh, biographical uh, material available on that person. Now, scanning is usually done to look for only specific bits of information and then read a text quickly and only to find specific information. What is the tip I should give you here? Do not skim when you actually need to scan and do not scan when you actually need to skim. Okay. What does it mean? Sometimes you have to look for only one word, one number and then do not read word by word the entire paragraph and then look for that number. So, use your eyes like a scanner okay, as if you are x-raying and then you are going to get that one word through your uh, x-ray eyes. So, just get that out. So, that is scanning. So, now when you have to skim, okay, then you do not read very quickly and then try to get that bit of information. There you try to understand the content. Here you are not actually concerned about the content, here you are just looking for some important piece of information. So, these two are important techniques, especially if you want to save lot of time and depending on uh, the questions that you have. Even the questions which are answering in assignments, you can use this uh, skimming scanning method when you are, uh, when you sometimes go back and then uh, look for uh, specific bits of information in the video or even the questions you can first skim and then you can scan for some important pieces of information there which you should look for. Questions like who is the author of this quotation, four names are given. Now, you need to look for one particular name that you have heard before or you need to cross check from the video. But this is in terms of looking at video as a kind of reading but actually this is used in actual textbook reading. As I said like reading uh, or identifying a number from a telephone directory you can do this. Now, the next interesting uh, technique is clustering. Now, clustering is something you need to practice, you need to develop. If you want to really increase your reading speed and develop your comprehension also. Now, in scanning as well as in skimming, you really do not develop comprehension. Comprehension is the understanding part, your ability to interpret the meanings correctly. Now, what kind of reading method are you following? Some of you, some of you may be reading a sentence word by word or even worse letter by letter. Now, take for example, a simple sentence like an apple a day keeps the doctor away. How some people read a simple sentence like this, the reading habit, they read an apple a day keeps the doctor away, an apple a day keeps the doctor away, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Okay. Now, worse than this, there may be still some people who may be still habituated to read letter by letter and then go for word by word. Example, a n and an a p p l e apple a d a y day k e e p s yes, keeps t h e the d o c t o r doctor a w a y away and apple a day keeps the doctor away and apple a day keeps the doctor away. Now, you can easily understand this is the rotten way of 
developing your reading speed and it is not going to help. This method has to stop. How can you stop this? Use the clustering method for speed and comprehension. How do you do this? Train your eyes to see words in groups, in clusters. Just group them and then your eyes should again attract them in groups. That is three or four words at a glance. You can do it like this. An apple a day keeps the doctor away. So, when you see this like this, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Okay. So, you can read it fast. And then some people can uh, group much more words. An apple a day keeps the doctor away. So, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. So, when you look at quickly these ones and some people are faster, they can even put four words, uh, four words together. An apple a day keeps the doctor away. So, two groups are formed in a single sentence. I just attract them in groups and then identify the meaning in terms of groups and then link the meaning very quickly. But some interesting factor about this and what you should be doing, understand first that each one groups words differently. As I was showing that three different people can group the words in three different manner in less or more in each groups, but at the same time words themselves can be grouped uh, in different manner. And how do you develop this skill which is a very important skill? First you choose to sit in a place where nobody will disturb you and select a piece of reading. Now try with slow speed at first one piece that you have selected. Now using this grouping method, clustering method, you identify the words in groups and then read it at your own slow pace, but compared to the previous normal one bit faster. Then once you finish it, it should be a new unknown passage. Now go to the passage, the piece of writing again and see whether you have understood it correctly and this time you read it in normal speed. Okay. Now if you think that you have understood almost correctly then increase the speed, select another unknown piece, unknown passage. Again read it very fast by grouping. Then once you finish the reading, stop it, recheck your comprehension in your normal speed to check whether you have missed anything. Your speed will increase the moment you come to the realization that you have not missed anything in the second normal reading. And in uh, due course of time, you will not need any second reading to uh, check whether you have understood it correctly or not because you would have trained your eyes to group the words and get the meanings also appropriately in the first grouping itself. But having said this, I should also tell you, you should not feel disappointed okay, if it does not happen to you overnight because you do not gain anything that easily without hard work. You need to practice regularly, you need to practice that with different pieces of writing and all the time first reading at a faster pace, second reading at a normal pace, the same one and comparing whether you have understood correctly or not. Then go for higher speed okay, and reach the highest one to what you think is the optimum possible. When you reach that and then start reading everything in groups. So, whether it is newspaper, whether it is magazine, whether it is a novel reading, when you train your eyes to read that quickly, so you will know that you are able to read much better books which you thought were difficult ones and much faster than before. One more technique that you need to develop when you have become a uh, sophisticated reader, when you are able to read at a higher pace is this close reading. What is this close reading? Although it may not be that relevant to some of you at this stage, but close reading is uh, uh, something that you need to develop. Once you become a kind of ardent reader of books, especially novels, literature stuff or any deeply philosophical uh, ideas if you are reading and which needs lot of thinking. So, then you have to do close reading. Close reading is done for appreciation, interpretation of ideas, adding to existing meanings. 
usually it is done in literature, religious studies, philosophical studies, where uh, there is a possibility that you can interpret the same uh, sentence in more than 10, 11 ways. And then even then something is missing, somebody can always add a new meaning to what is there already. And each word is studied for all its implications and even grammatical categorization. How is it functioning by uh, violating some grammar rules and by following something and placing this word here in this position, how is it uh, making a different meaning? So, what is happening when the word is kept in the end, end focus? What is happening when it is kept in the beginning? how a writer is trying to foreground or background a word, how a writer is trying to play with the original meaning of the word in this context. So, every word is scrutinized for inner and in depth meanings and then generally these readers who are similar to critics, they are not satisfied with the denotative meaning, denotative meaning is the dictionary meaning. When you look at fire, so, you know fire is something that uh, when you light a stove, fire comes okay, and then when you light a match box, fire comes and then you put your finger, it burns you. That is what is fire, denotative meaning. But fire in literature can mean passion, okay, can mean very strong inner feelings, okay, can mean desire. So, this is the connotative meaning and in a context, so it can also mean something else depending on the context, who is using and then in which context the users are using it, it can mean something. So, the close reading people try to actually look at the connotative and contextual meanings rather than just the denotative one. In fact, they read between the lines, they read between the words, they just want to see what is missing, how they can give some more connections. It also gives overall a very deep and enhanced understanding of the book, the novel, the research material or a, or a kind of article written. When you read a novel for instance, in close reading you can also offer a new interpretation completely or even clear a misunderstanding, what people have not understood before. In your close reading you can bring in some new insights and make people understand that also. So, now these are the major techniques. As a concluding thought, I just want you to remember that you should follow two golden principles in reading. One, I was telling you that do not develop any bad habits which will give you addiction, but then I just will give you an exemption if you can develop one addiction and which is actually a good habit, addiction in terms of reading let reading become a kind of addiction. There are famous writers who cannot sleep if they are not surrounded by books. Those writers cannot uh, like get up and if the newspaper is not there, they feel disheartened. So, they all the time need to read something. All the time when they are sitting in the train, when they are waiting for bus, when they are in the restroom, so even when they are bathing, so one hand they keep the book and then uh, they are inside their uh, bathtub. So, they do not lose a single minute even when they are eating, okay, they keep reading and in fact, they do not stop reading. Now, that kind of addiction is something that you need to develop because for all the reasons I have said, only by developing reading, you can develop all other skills. Okay. So, whether it is presentation or writing or communicating effectively or developing your overall personality, reading plays a very crucial role. It is a crux of the matter and you need to pay attention and develop addiction for uh, reading. It is a very healthy addiction. And the second golden rule principle that you need to keep in mind is, when you start reading something, okay, particularly, it can be anything, any, any reading material, it can be a newspaper or this thing, finish it. So, when you start reading a novel, okay, do not leave it in between. In fact, ideally speaking create time, you assess that this novel is going to take 3 hours time. 3 hours you keep away from TV, away from people, away from mobile, select a secluded place and identify whether anybody will disturb you and ensure that nobody disturbs you and then start it. 
and finish it and then you come back to your normal uh, work routine area. So, if you start anything especially in terms of reading finish it and the concluding point in terms of a quote from a famous writer Oscar Wilde and it is worthwhile to remember he says that it is what you read when you do not have to. It means today when I ask you to read for example, Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, you read okay, thinking that it is relevant okay, for you to develop your personality, relevant for the exam and all that. It is what you read when you do not have to, when there is no exam, nobody is asking you to do anything, what will you read? Whether it is a highly classical novel or some trivial matter or some useless stuff, Okay. What is it that you are interested in reading when you do not have to, when there is no compulsion, the teacher is not telling, you need not pass any exam, what is it that you will read? That determines for Oscar Wilde what you will be when you cannot help it. What does he mean by that? What you will be when you cannot help it is that at one point of your time, whether you want it or not, you are going to become somebody. You, you would like, you initially wanted to become an astronaut, but you will end up as a clerk in a government office. Okay. So, again uh, all dreams you had, but finally you become somebody okay. and Oscar Wilde says that and that becoming somebody finally is determined by what you read when you do not have to. That is the extra reading the reading that is done for pure pleasure, the reading that is done for your curiosity. So, that is something that is going to determine your final becoming, your final personality. So, keep that in mind. So, pay attention to what you read when you have to and at the same time pay equal attention or even more attention to what you do not have to read okay, when, no, when there is no compulsion on you to read. So, with this thought, so we will go to the last lecture in the next one and uh, having said this, at least start reading one book uh, from today and then try to finish at least a book in a week or you target even a month and then maintain a healthy habit of writing how many books you are reading, whatever book it may be of your choice. It can be novel, it can be short story, poem, it can be just uh, non-fiction, it can be uh, related to travel writing, it can be related to car and then it can be related to some bike mechanism, whatever is uh, interesting you read it. And as I said at least read for 3 hours, soon you will become a very learned person. So, wish you all success using a reading and the reading tips that I have given. Thank you so much for watching this video. See you in the next lecture.